and what is up guys? Welcome back to Excel Yourself for another video. Hopefully you guys are all doing awesome today. And today's video is going to be an absolute treat, guys. I personally have been itching to record this ever since I got this shipment in. So today we're gonna be taking a look at what I believe is the biggest purchase that I've ever made on eBay or uh, probably in my life, honestly, other than my car. <laughs> but anyways, guys, the total that I paid for this lot of Excel Yourself items, it is just a huge mixed bag of card, mostly trading cards. Then there is a ton of, you know, carded cars, Gen 2 cars, uh, loose mint cars. There's just all sorts of goodies in here, starter set cases. So I made this purchase from a guy off of Reddit. His username is Champ CVU. And uh, who knows, this might actually be the biggest, you know, bulk accelerators purchase of all time, actually thinking about it. I don't know if anything's ever sold on eBay for more than $4,000. But uh, basically how this whole thing went down, I had been messaging him about probably a year to a year and six months ago when I was looking to acquire just a ton of Accelerators cards as quickly as possible because uh, the demand for the Accelerators cards was super high back then. And uh, we'd started messaging, he told me that he had a bunch of dupes. He, uh, he said he got back into collecting real hard, you know, probably once he got his first, I wanna say he said when he got his first, you know, job, he, uh, he started collecting real hard with all that, you know, extra, disposable income that we all get as soon as we get jobs. But uh, so he started buying a bunch of accelerator stuff and a ton of cards. And I wanna say that he got into card collecting real heavy, um, probably when the booster packs were super, super cheap, you know, cause for a long time there, they were, you know, 15 to 50 bucks for like a whole case of booster packs. They were pretty cheap. But uh, anyways, he bought a ton of accelerators, booster packs had a ton of duplicate cards that were all, you know, near mint to mint, pack fresh cards. And uh, I was messaging him trying to, you know, negotiate a deal. And I think we had worked out a deal for like, I wanna say it was, he said he had like 1,500 Acceleracers cards, which was, I think I had about 1,500 in my inventory at the time, 1,000 to 1,500, and I was like, that is awesome. That'll double my inventory, it'll be great. I've got a bunch of buyers looking for these cards. And uh, we negotiated a price that was, I wanna say like, a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars for all these duplicates and he had a bunch of foils in there too i think it was like 30 or 40 foil cards so i was like this is good you know it'll uh it'll take some time to see profit because that's kind of the way it goes with the trading cards um it's pretty easy to look at a bulk lot of you know a thousand trading cards and go oh my gosh this is five thousand dollars worth of uh profit here but you got to think the trading cards are a bit more difficult to sell it's not everybody looks for the trading cards Everything sells with time, especially accelerators related, but uh, at least that's my philosophy on eBay. Everything will sell over time. There's a buyer for everything out there, but uh, trading cards just don't sell quite as fast as loose mint cars and carded cars. So the trading cards, if you're looking to sell through a thousand cards, it's probably gonna take you a good four or five months, maybe even a year to sell through a thousand cards. I wanna say on average, I sell maybe 400 to 500 trading cards a month if I had to give a rough estimate. But that is one pretty big advantage of selling trading cards in my big listing like I do is that uh, I don't have to constantly keep listing and relisting them because that would just take an absolute eternity to sell through them. But uh, anyway, so we had negotiated a deal. It was like 15 or 1600 bucks for all of his cards. I don't remember off the top of my head. And uh, But I think something happened either we had stopped communicating for a while there or communications broke down for a month or two there. But I know we were both pretty busy and uh, I ended up buying a bunch of other carded cars, lots. I think I bought a full set of Accelerators cards for like 500 bucks. I bought several things that pretty much wiped out all my spending cash for the time. So we kind of had to table the deal for another six to eight months or so. And then we started talking again. And then we probably had another month or two laughs because I was buying more stuff. I just, I always want my money moving to something that's going to be profitable. I really hate sitting on a lot of capital, but uh, sometimes it does burn me like in this case because probably in over the last four or five months, the interest in the trading card game has absolutely skyrocketed again. As a lot of you guys probably know with a lot of the foil cards are you know, selling for 40 to $50 these days. I think a Reactor Realm card sold the other day for like $125. It's sold for a best offer on 125. So I'm assuming it sold for at least probably close to a hundred bucks, which is absolutely ridiculous. That should never ever happen. I don't know who paid for that, but somebody got torched on that one. <laughs> but anyway, so we started negotiating again about two months ago. And uh, unfortunately I was in the process of you know, buying a house and moving. And uh, so we had to push it another two months down the road until uh, recently this past week where I was actually able to close the deal on this sale guys. So unfortunately it ended up running me, I think about 3,200 was the breakdown for the 1,600 Accelerators cards, which still comes out to about $2 per card, which is, that's pretty steep. You know, I, I typically, cause a lot of the cards, the common sell for, you know, a dollar a piece, at least in my, uh, in my listing. So you gotta think that's a little much, but uh, there were a bunch of foil cards in there, including a bunch of rares, you know, like jump jets and some of the other cards I believe are in there. I have not taken a look at the shipment yet, but I was looking through the Excel spreadsheet that he sent me and uh, shout out to him for keeping really detailed records because he made this whole process so much easier than negotiating with someone who just, you know, doesn't know what they had. They're like, yeah, you know, I've got a couple hundred cards. He had a great breakdown of everything. So a huge shout out to him again. But uh, anyway, so it was about $3,200 for the cards 
Um, and of course, you know me, I'm looking back to about a year ago or a year and six months ago when I could have had all those cards for like a thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars or whatever we had agreed on at the time. And I was just like, gosh, if only I would have closed that deal then. But hindsight is 2020. I didn't realize that the trading cards were still going to keep going up in value the way they did. So, uh, lesson learned, you know, but he still gave me a pretty fair price on them, honestly. So $3,200 for the cards. And then I want to say we tacked on another $500 or so for a bunch of miscellaneous stuff like a starter set cases. He had a bunch of Looseman accelerators cars and, you know, a, a small pile of, uh, of carded accelerators cars from 2005. I think it was like 12 or 15 of them. And then he was looking through uh, his collection again and he found a bunch of duplicate Gen 2 cars. I think he said he had them under his bed or in his closet or something. And he had like another 12 or 15 Gen 2 carded cars. So we added those in as well. And the, uh, the entire total came out to, I think, I believe it was $4,250 for this purchase. Definitely the biggest purchase I have made in uh, my eBay career. But I do think we will be able to net a nice return over time. It's just going to take some time, you know? That's the big thing with selling through stuff on eBay is uh, another factor that people forget sometimes is it's not always about the profit you can make off of something, it's about the amount of time it will take. Because, you know, if you can buy something for 10 bucks and immediately flip it for 20, that's a quick $10 profit. That's better than, you know, having something for 10 bucks that you can flip for 25, but it'll take you six months, you know, because then you're waiting an extra six months for that $5. So uh, that's another big thing to consider if you are buying and selling on eBay. But uh, let me get off my tangent here. So anyway, so we have this gigantic purchase that we made. It's all boxed up behind me. He did a fantastic job packaging it. And it's actually really funny. After I had paid him for the items, uh, he was getting ready to ship them out. And he messaged me and he said, hey, no way. We actually live pretty close. And I was like, what? No way. So I actually was able to meet him in person. We met halfway uh, between our houses and we were able to do the transaction in a grocery store parking lot. Nice and uh, it was a Publix, you know, we're, we're pretty bougie. But I was able to meet him in person and uh, chat with him for a little bit. Super cool, super nice guy. Huge shout out to Champ CBU again for meeting me halfway. You know, it was a, an absolute pleasure to work through, through this whole process. And just keep this in mind, guys, as we're looking through this shipment, this is not his full collection. These were just his duplicates and extras. He has an absolutely massive collection. He probably would have had one of the biggest collections overall out of anything that we've looked at before he sold me all these extras. But that is enough chatter, guys. So let's go ahead and open up this shipment and take a look at everything that we've got inside, guys. This is going to be a pretty long video, and uh, it's going to take me quite some time to process through all these cards, unfortunately. But uh, by the time this video comes out, I'm sure I will have already processed through everything and have it all up on my eBay page. I, I just wanted to space out all the shipment videos that I was getting in so they weren't all, you know, back to back to back on the channel. Got to keep it fresh for you guys. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this shipment and then the rest of my day is going to be spent watching the, uh, the NCAA March Madness games and sleeving cards. But uh, let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, guys, so here is the haul that we are going to be unboxing today from Champ CVU. As you can see here, guys, we just have an absolute, well, this box weighs about, it has to weigh at least, probably at least 80 to 100 pounds. It is very, very heavy and uh, it is chock full of all sorts of good stuff. We're gonna go through every single bit of it and take a look. All right, so first box here, looks like we have some loose mint cars in here. And first up, we have a whole army of purple spine busters. As you guys know, these were, um, I'm pretty sure these came with movies at one point, uh, just like the Chrome RDO 6 did. But uh, certain people ended up with just an absolute ton of them. I know there's some sellers on eBay for a while that had, you know, 40, 50, 100 of them. And they're all individually sealed, which almost guarantees these to be loose mint, which is absolutely awesome you don't ever have to worry about these purple spine busters being dinged up so we have an absolute ton of them here oh my gosh hold on let's see how many do we have hold on we're almost there all right so it looks like we have a total of one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen so 15 of these purple spine busters we're going to toss these over here get them out of the way and then see what else we've got in this box some tells me it's going to take me quite some time to go through all this stuff. All right, so next up, we have a bunch of individually wrapped cars. I'm assuming these are all loose cars as well. So here we have a CM5 Rolling Thunder, and all of these should be loose mint cars or almost loose mint. Um, I think they've been out of the package for a while, but they look absolutely fantastic. So I'm not going to bore you guys by opening these up one at a time. I'm going to go ahead and open, unwrap all of them and then show you guys all the cars that we got in. All right, guys, so I unboxed all those Loose Mint Accelerators cars and look at this army of cars, guys. Lots of great stuff in here. So we've got Jackhammer, CM5 Rolling Thunder, Nitrium, another CM5 Rolling Thunder, nice paint variations. RDO6 with the deep green wheels, which is a very nice uh, addition. Two starter set exclusive synchros and these bad boys are absolutely pristine. 
Um, Champ did an absolutely fantastic job of packaging up all this stuff and just taking care of it the, over the years. I mean, sometimes you can pull this stuff right out of the package and, you know, not touch it for five years and it'll still be dinged up. So the fact that he's had them for this long and they're in such good shape is unbelievable. So let's keep going here. We got two more Rolling Thunders, a CM6 and a CM5. Then we got a CM5 RDO6 with the deep green wheels. CM5 Riveted, we've got a Power Rage, Ratified, another Rolling Thunder, Octanium, some Satin Red Hollow Backs, a CM5 Spine Buster with the Chrome Engine. Absolutely gorgeous. That is definitely the most desirable of all the Spine Buster variations. And then we have another Deep Green Wheels RDO6 Carbide, Plastic Hollow Back, Metalloid, Nitrium, and this is actually the, uh, the Shiny Gloss Nitrium, which is a little bit rare from my understanding. Then we got Jackhammer, Hollowback, Iridium, Rolling Thunder, Excellium, another Satin Red Hollowback, and another Excellium to wrap it up. And it's kind of interesting how all these RDO 6s all have the deep green wheels. Almost everyone that I've ever pulled out of a pack has had the light green wheels. So that's a pretty cool uh, little feature there. I definitely prefer the deep green wheels. So these are all the loose mint cars that we've got so far, and we have quite a bit more stuff to go, guys. All right, now we have a box of a bunch of carded stuff. Let's go ahead and start pulling them out one by one. So we've got a carded CM6 Nitrium. Then we've got a CM6 Rolling Thunder. Actually, I'll pull it down here and make it a little bit easier. Let's see if I can get more than one at a time. Next up, we have a CM6 Jackhammer. Then we have a Gen 2 Realm Series RDO 5. Very nice Gen 2 cars. That's the one with the solid green wheels. And then moving on here, let me reach into my mystery box again. So we've got a CM5 Ratified. And then we have a CM5 Riveted. Another CM6 Jackhammer. Lots of great cars here. And then I think these are the last handful of Gen 1 Accelerators cars here. So we have a CM6 Anthracite, a CM6 Excellium, a CM6 RDO6, another one with the deep green wheels. That's so funny. They're all deep green wheels. Then we have a CM6 Iridium, and then another Gen 2 car. This is a Gen 2 Realm Series Jackhammer. And just look at how pristine that blister is, guys. Maybe a tiny crease there. One down in the corner, but overall, these are absolutely beautiful. I seriously cannot say enough about the condition on all these cars. They are absolutely fantastic. So uh, let's see here. I'm going to put this right here, and then we're going to move these down here, make another little row. Next up, we've got, oh, we have one more Gen 1, which is a CM5 Powerbomb to wrap up the Gen 1 Acceleracers. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we have 11 Gen 1 Accelerators cars, and we have a whole bunch of Gen 2s coming, guys. So let's see what we've got next. We have an Accelercharged Series Pile Driver, once again, with the solid wheels. And let's see, the Jackhammer, that had solid, or that had the, uh, the clear wheels. Interesting, solid wheels there. Always want to watch out for the wheel variation, see if you can ever get a, a split wheel variation. Next up, we have a Realm Series RDO 6, that Storm Realm Series one. And next up, guys, even more coming tons and tons of carded cars so next up we have a strip metal series iridium definitely one of my favorite cars in the line anything strip metal i'm a huge huge fan next up we've got an excella charge series anthracite not a huge fan of the paint job but uh, has grown on me over the years so we have a gen 2 anthracite and then a drone series nitrium which is very nice absolutely love the uh the matte finish on this nitrium it's really beautiful especially with the decals all the way around the edges and the cars just keep coming and coming, guys. Next up, we have a Team Color Series RDO9 with the clear wheels. Absolutely sweet. And let's see if we can grab another handful. Next up, we have another Realm Series RDO5. This one does have the clear wheels, so we have both variations, the clear wheels and the solid wheels. And then we have a Drone Series Flathead Fury, guys. Check out this car. It's not as sweet as Randy's Customs, but it is still a pretty sick car. All I'm saying, guys, is once somebody finally figures out how to recreate this Accelerators packaging, and I'm sure it won't take too long with the way our uh, our customs creators are working these days, uh, that's going to be absolutely wicked. If somebody could ever recreate the packaging and then just slide customs in, that would be super sick. So we have a Drone Series Flathead Fury. Definitely won't be too cheap just based on, I think the ones listed now are all between like, what, $175 and $200 or something crazy like that. So we'll see. Maybe I'll list it at $125 or $150. Let somebody get a bit of a discount on it. So Drone Series Flathead Fury. And next up, we have another one of the big boys, an Accelerate Charge Series RDO8 with the solid wheels. And this is definitely one of my probably top five favorite cars in the Gen 2 line. Absolutely love the color scheme on this RDO8. Definitely one of the more expensive cars in the line too. So RDO8 and the Drone Flathead Fury. 
and just look at this array of stuff, guys. And we are not even probably even halfway done. We have so many trading cards coming. So next up, we've got a strip metal series riveted and a team color series high voltage. Absolutely love this riveted. And I think I just noticed a pretty cool variation on that high voltage. So I've had one like this before where the roof of the car, the paint scheme is different than the side of the car for whatever reason. It's like a split paint variation. This one's really prominent. I, uh, I sold one of these before that had that variation to a, a pretty well-known collector of variations. So this is another one in the same vein, just a little more pronounced. It's got clear wheels. And as you can see, it's got the light orange paint all the way around the car and then the dark dull orange on the roof. Absolutely love the crystal blue windshield though. That's pretty cool. So a split color variation, uh, team color side voltage. Very, very nice. And next up, we actually found another Gen 1 car in there. So there was another hollowback mix in there. So that takes us up to 12 total Gen 1 cars with all these Gen 2s. And we have a couple more coming here. So next up, we have the Acceleron Series Cub Light, one of my favorite cars in the line. Cannot say enough about this paint job. What a gorgeous, gorgeous car. Let's keep going here. Next up, we have Team Colors Power Bomb, which is severely slept on. And oh, I thought I had split wheels for a second there. Never mind. Bummer, I got excited. So Team Colors Series Power Bomb. And then we have an Accela Charge Series Battle Spec, which is a very nice piece. Um, definitely one of the more desirable cars. I wouldn't say it's one of the rarer ones, but uh, it's definitely in very high demand, as is most of the Gen 2 Teku cars. So Accela Charge Series Battle Spec is another great one to have from Gen 2. Next up, guys, we have an Acceleron Series Spine Buster. Another great paint job here. And this car, for whatever reason, it's not all that rare. <laughs> it's, I mean, about a year ago, these were selling like 25 to 40 bucks. I mean. And they, a lot of times they wouldn't even sell at that price. But recently, some of these have been selling for like 70, 80. I think one went for like $130 recently. Absolutely insane, guys. Just, uh, I'd like to put a PSA out there, guys. This car is not that rare. Um, I'll probably put this one on auction and uh, let people do their thing. But uh, yeah, Gen 2 Spinebuster is not a rare car. But people love those Acceleron paint jobs. So it looks like the last Gen 2 car in the box is... A drone ratified, saving the, the best for last, right, Brian? <laughs> I'm just kidding. But uh, love the paint job on the drone ratified. Got the clear wheels on this one. So that is going to wrap up the Gen 2 cars. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So 18 Gen 2 cars, 12 carded Gen 1 cars, bunch of loose mint cars. Let's jump on to the next box. And this is where it starts to get crazy, guys. Look at all of these trading cards. I know they look like Pokemon boxes, but they're actually all filled with Accelerators trading cards, over 1,600 trading cards. Absolutely unreal. It's gonna take me forever to sort through all these. So let's start out here with the two starter set cases. And uh, these do come with the tokens inside, if I remember correctly, based on what he said. I think they're loose tokens. I wonder if I can get it open with one hand. I might have to put the phone down. Yep, so they still have the car holder for the green synchro and the loose tokens inside. So very cool to get two more starter sets. Who knows? I may put together a couple of starter decks out of some of these cards and just sell them uh, as loose starter sets. All right, guys. So we have box number one of the Acceleracers trading cards. I'm not even sure how to open this thing, actually. And uh, all these boxes are pretty heavy. I'm not going to lie. I wonder if I can stab through this. I probably should have uh, done this off camera. But uh, based on what he was showing me, he packaged these up beautifully. So I have absolutely zero concern about their conditions. Let's see here if we can get this thing open. Come on. And boom. So here we have some Acceleracers cards, guys, and they're all individually labeled. Absolutely beautiful. So as you can see here, we've got base hollow back, 12 of them. So there's 12 of these hollow backs. Uh, oh, wow. So they're all actually individually top loaded and they have sleeves on them. You cannot get better packaging than that, guys. These cards are absolutely mint and beautiful. That is like the best pack job I've ever seen. And they're all in their own top loaders. Wow, that must've cost them a fortune in top loaders. Huge shout out to you, champ. That was a nice touch, man. You didn't have to do that, but I appreciate it. So guys, as you can see here, nothing but accelerators cards. We have the 12 hollow backs here. And uh, I'm not gonna go through all of these. We're just gonna go through some. So I'm just gonna skip around a bit. So let's see, jaw jammers. There's 12 of these, riveteds. Flathead Furies. So Flathead Fury base. Sorry, guys, struggling here. So it looks like there's only one Flathead Fury. We'll just go through and look for some of the rare ones. So Riveted, Rolling Thunder, Ratified, Torque Flathead Fury, Torque Power Bomb. So there's one Torque Power Bomb foil card. Just lots of cool stuff in here. Let's see, what is this? Torque, oh, torque ratified, torque flathead fury. Got it. It's 
sort of finding my way around in here. But anyways, guys, it is going to take me absolutely forever to go through all these cards. And it's super nice touch of him to sort all these out and label them individually. That's going to make this so much easier. But uh, once I get all these unboxed in a day or two and, you know, sorted through, I will probably post the next clip to this video. Or, uh, well, I'm just going to fast forward a couple of days here and show you guys all the rares, foils, and uh, the Jump Jets card that I believe is in here somewhere. And it is finally finished, guys. You guys will not believe how long it took me to go through all these cards and sort through them, process through them, make sure, uh, check all their conditions, so on and so forth. But uh, just it had to be done. Wanted to make sure I was really thorough with it. As you guys know, I'm very, very strict when it comes to card conditions. You know, I don't want anybody to ever buy cards from me and feel like they're in not quite, you know, near mint condition. So a lot of times if you buy near mint to mint cards from my listing, they're probably closer to like mint mint. Cause I mean, sometimes cards come straight out of packs and I don't uh, include them, but that is what our, uh, our inventory looked like beforehand. These are all the cards that we got it in that shipment. It was about 1600 total cards. So it took me quite some time and uh, the uh, champ actually top loaded and sleeved each individual card, which was absolutely unbelievable. Um, huge, huge shout out to him for taking the time and effort to do all that. I'm sure it took him quite some time and it definitely took me some time to go through all of them. Uh, my poor cuticles are absolutely destroyed from pulling out of top loaders, but 100% uh, kept those cards as safe as possible. So out of the 1600 cards, I would say, uh, so these are all the rares and foils that uh, were in mint condition. So as you can see, huge stack here. Um, here are some of the other rares and foils that were I think in lightly worn condition. And then there are only two or three that were in heavily worn condition. So uh, as far as those goes, probably about a 90% success rate as far as near mint cards. And then uh, we had some starter deck exclusive vehicle cards and quick reference cards. Then we had a whole bunch of shift cards. You really can't get the full effect. Whole bunch of shift cards, whole bunch of hazards, mods, realms, Excel chargers. And I think there was quite a few realms in here actually as well. Well, there's a lot of Excel chargers. And then all the vehicle cards we've got here. And then these were all the cards that did not quite make the cut on the uh, near mint to mint scale. Um, there wasn't anything terribly wrong with a lot of these. A lot of them were like so close to being near mint condition. I just uh, wasn't 100% comfortable with some of them. Just, you know, as you can see, you got some whitening and scuffing around the edges, whitening and scuffing. And like on the whole, they look really solid. I just, like I said, real particular with card conditions, but, uh, but it's not like they're worthless, even if they're not in mint condition. I can, uh, I can easily put these in those big variety lots that I do with 22 cards because I was running real low on those cards as well. And uh, a lot of these are pretty desirable cards too. These are a lot of the starter set vehicles. So uh, definitely not an issue at all. I would say maybe 400 or so of the cards. I didn't quite have make the cut, but uh, even 400 out of 1600 total, that's like a 75% success rate as far as getting them in near mint to make condition, which is absolutely unheard of as far as buying loose cards. Because I'd say normally it's about like a 60-40 or a 50-50 split. Even if cards are packed fresh, you know, these cards are notorious for coming out with all sorts of like scuffs and scratches. And over time, they get like these dusty marks on them like uh, this card has. And uh, a lot of times it's nothing that the owner of the card does wrong either. Just uh, they happen to sit out. Something about the, the black bordering on the cards, it really lends itself to uh, scuffing over time. Even if there's, you know, it's kept in a card sleeve for 10 years, sometimes it'll still have that scuffing. So overall, I was absolutely thrilled with the condition of these cards. They were just as good as advertised. He told me they were mostly packed fresh cards and I 100% believe it. Um, absolutely a great way to get a ton of inventory in stock. So let's go through some of the rares and foil cards that we got in. And when this video drops on Monday, some of these cards will probably already be sold. I've had buyers waiting on some of these cards to come in, but uh, these were the heavily played foil cards. So it was an acid bath foil card and uh, it's kind of hard to see, but as you can see, there's like a crease up here in the top, some whitening around the bottom, then a battering bubble foil a Technetium card. Technetium is definitely one of the rarer silencer vehicles as well. I didn't used to think it was that rare, but lately it's been real tough to find Technetium cards. And a Reverb card was the other one. I think it had a crease somewhere or something. I don't remember exactly what it was. I think it was up at the top. So those were the four heavily worn rare slash foil cards. And then we have our moderately worn stack here, including the crown jewel of this purchase, which was a Jump Jets card. You guys know how much I moan and complain when I can't find Jump Jets cards. But this is a gorgeous looking Jump Jets card. It does have some wear and tear on and honestly the uh team bag is a little bit dusty already from sitting on my desk but uh the card is in pretty good shape it has some whitening around the edges here and there i think it had a small crease uh right there i think about halfway up a lot of times that comes just from being in a, a binder over time but uh on the whole i think it's in lightly worn condition or moderately worn condition and the cool thing about this is that it's actually not a misprint jump jets I haven't pulled enough of them to really know the split on the misprint jump jets. And uh, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, that's where it doesn't have a top border of the card. These three white boxes will extend up to the top. And a lot of times the ink in the card will sort of turn blue as it goes to the bottom, almost like it was the printer was running out of ink as they were making it. But uh, I think both of the jump jets that I pulled out of booster packs have been the misprint versions. But uh, the one or two that I pulled out of three packs have been like this. They've been 
perfect, uh, perfect printed cards. So it's interesting. It's almost like if you get one out of a booster pack, it's going to be misprinted. And uh, if you get them out of a three pack, that's your best chance of getting one with the solid border, which is beautiful. I was hoping it would be this one and not the misprint one. So I was not disappointed. So we have a Jump Jets card, and I believe it is already headed out to a buyer. So moving on, we had a Nitrox 3 foil, a Desert Realm foil, a Cyber Grid Realm, and another Reverb card. So these were all in lightly worn or moderately worn condition. They weren't too bad off, just not quite mint condition. So the Jump Jets definitely the crown jewel there. And moving on to the mint rares and foils, guys, we have a whole bunch to flip through here. I probably should have sorted through them a little bit better, but it's just a great, great looking group of cars. So rares upon rares upon rares. We have Torque Spine Buster, a second Torque Spine Buster foil, a third Torque Spine Buster foil. Lots of great looking foils here. Then we have a foil Torque Power Bomb, a Flathead Fury. Nice to get that one back in stock. Then we have an RDO1 version two. Then we have a pair of RDO eights in mint condition. Definitely not an easy card to find at all. And then we have an RDO9, got Galorum as well. Then we have a pair of RDO2 version two cards, definitely another great foil. Uh, I kind of wish they would have done the background in this one like they did for the, uh, the Hyper Chicane though. Then we have an Octanium card, one of the toughest vehicle cards to find. And then a trio of Vectra Covlight foils, cannot get enough of the Silencer's foil cards. Then we have three Vectra Carbides as well. So three Vectra Covlights, three Vectra Carbides. And then probably the best looking foil cards in the set are these Teku vehicle foils. We have not one, not two, not three, but four Hyper Reverb foil cards, absolutely gorgeous. And then of course we have a pair of Hyper Chicanes as well. These all normally sell just about as quickly as I can get them in stock. And then we have another Torque Spine Buster that I probably put in the wrong pile earlier. <laughs> so I think all in all it was like four Torque Spine Busters and that is just for the vehicle cards, guys. We have a whole nother stack here. Let's see if I can get my light a little bit closer here. I don't wanna to have too bad of a glare on the cards. So then we have a whole pile of Micro Realms. We have three Micro Realm cards, a Desert Realm foil, a Lava Realm foil, no Reactor Realms though. And then we have two Storm Realms and two Fog Realm cards, another two that have been out of stock on for a while. Then a Mint Foil Battering Bubble, which I expect will be sold pretty quickly. And then a Nitrox 3 foil. Then we've got a Strato Thruster, which we could have had a toy for that. And then of course we have a whole bunch of Armored Plows, which is probably one of the more common uh, mod foils. We have three Armored Plows. It's funny, when I first started opening packs and stuff, I got Feather Frame cards left and right. But these days, I see way more Armored Plows and Strato Thrusters than Feather Frames. I don't know if I just had a lot of Feather Frame bad luck early on or what. But uh, then we got two Shell Skin Foils, a Tornado Vortex, love the card art on that one. Then we've got, I think, four copies of Tsunami Foil, all in mint condition, absolutely gorgeous. Then a bootleg reverse and a pair of home track advantages to wrap it up. I have not counted them up completely, but I'm pretty sure it was something like 40 plus foil cards that were in mint condition. Absolutely incredible. Once again, huge shout out to Champ for keeping these in such great condition, guys. I've had some rough experiences buying uh, loose cards uh, with some that are just, you know, they, it's tough because the difference between a near mint card and a non mint card can be kind of tough sometimes. I mean, they can have perfect borders on the back and the front, but just have a scuff or a scratch that throws it off. So it's really hard to tell through photos, but. I am very, very pleased with the condition of these cards. He did an absolutely fantastic job of keeping good care of these cards, making sure they were as protected as well as they possibly could be. So these are all going to be great, great additions to the inventory. Those piles are going to be absolutely through the roof once I add all of these. That is for sure. So once again, huge shout out to Champ. And these are all the foils and rare cards that we have back in our inventory. So that is going to wrap up the haul that we got from Champ CVU. Once again, huge, huge shout out to him for uh, working out a deal with us. And I gotta say guys, might be one of the biggest purchases ever made in Accelerator's history, I don't know though. But it was definitely a super cool experience meeting him halfway. And I've gotta say, I think that's the first person that I've ever met in my life that was another Accelerator's fan in person. Because, uh, you know, other than my freaking parents who I made watch the movies with me as a kid, um, nobody else that I've ever known has ever known anything about Accelerator. So it's so freaking cool to be able to stand there and talk to somebody, you know, about reverb and booster packs and 3D foils. Super, super sick experience and, uh, Hopefully I can meet a bunch more of you guys someday at a convention or something. I don't know. It was a pretty cool experience, but uh, that's going to wrap it up, guys. Be sure to keep your eyes peeled on my eBay page for all these items that I've gotten in stock recently, if they're not already listed by the time of this video dropping. But uh, if you enjoyed, be sure to smash the like button for me, subscribe to the Accelerators Hub for more Accelerators-related content, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, guys.